Hello and welcome back. In today's video we're gonna watch full build of this cool looking helicopter Mi24V from Zvezda in 148. Kit is nice with several marking options, but unfortunately with the very basic details. No rivets, no small stuff, but it have engines and it can serve as a very nice base for upgrades. And because of this, I'm gonna use some aftermarket stuff, as wheels, machine gun, and some photo H sets. As usual for aircraft build, I'm starting from the cockpit. As you see, there are almost no details on plastic which is good in my case, as I'm gonna use photo H set. And now I don't need to cut all plastic details before it. I'm burning photo H to make it more flexible. I recommend to use it only when you need to bend something in difficult shape and don't burn thin photo H part, as it can be totally burned in fire. To glue photo H parts, I'm using my trusty black CA. Recolored photo H is grey, but it has this nasty pixelate shining. To cure it, I'm using matte varnish from VMS. See? Much better. To simulate glass, I'll just use gloss varnish later. I used black Mr. Surfacer for artificial shadows, but later I discovered that it was useless for most of the color, you will see why. First I sprayed cockpit blue, really nice color, very bright, and totally wrong in this case as main color were black. Yeah. For grey parts I used what called black base technique. Basically I'm making kinda marble texture to simulate tone variation and cover it with thin layers of paint until I'm happy with the result. As usual, black parts were sprayed with Tamiya Nato Black. And as I said earlier, I messed up with main color and repainted it back to black. After main color were ready, I sprayed it with a gloss varnish. To make details pop, I used tone grey panel wash. It's also kinda universal and looks great not only on black but on a grey surface too. After wash was done, I covered cockpit with matte varnish before moving to colored photo H panels. Seat belts I glued before, as I wanted to use wash on them too and make them look more interesting and a bit darker. I use ultra glue for panels as it gives me more time to fix it in place properly. Also wax pencil is a wonderful helper to work with thin and gentle photo H parts.
I decided to glue some photo edge before assembling fuselage, which also wasn't the brightest idea, as lots of them felt and I was forced to glue them again later. I also totally forgot to film painting of cargo section, but it actually was the same as a cockpit. Windows needed to be glued with extra accuracy and, as you can see, it gave me some grey hairs. Now to the fun part. Gluing two parts of fuselage together is not the toughest mission here, but requires a lot of glue and much more masking tape to hold it together. Engine covers was a main problem here. For some reason it didn't fit at all. Pretty sure it was my mistake somewhere, as I didn't heard from other people that they had problem with them. I almost forgot to paint canopy from inside before gluing. As canopy gonna be open, it's crucial to paint it inside too. Otherwise, it will end up looking too gloss and not good in general. After fuselage was glued, filled with putty and sanded, I started to add small details and even landing gear. They are quite thick on this model and was very comfy to use them as a stand to prevent model from unwanted cheating. Heat reducers were glued with CA and all excess was removed with CA debonder. Then it was finally time to paint, but first it was important to clean whole model with alcohol to remove any grease and dust. Then another important step is to cover all photo edge with metal primer. It will prevent chipping as paint grip on metal surface is not so strong. I used black primer again, as I planned to use black base and also I thought it will be more comfortable for the next step. which is applying rivet decals. It's actually quite simple, basically as a regular decal. But I have two tips to say. First, 
it is better to apply them directly on plastic because, and it is a second tip, vehicle varnish layer is not too thick but still visible, so try to cut them as close as possible to rivet themselves. After a couple of days, I added all rivets and was able to move forward. I covered them with primer again, to level them a bit with other surface. Same as for cockpit, I used black base technique for the rest of paint job. And it's actually very nice, won't you say? Also, don't mind me pretending that I'm painting this area, as I forgot to film it again. I've started camouflage with brightest color and this time I tried to add gloss varnish to the mix as I saw on night shift videos, for making paint flow smoothly. But honestly saying, it didn't work for me personally and on later steps I resprayed same color without gloss and mix. Protective green I've sprayed already without any gloss, and except for some oversprays, it went very smooth. Also, after scheme was done, I went back and forth with lighter and darker tones of main colors to increase tone variation and to have more weathered look and also to fix oversprays. This time I used not gloss but satin varnish from VMS, as I would usually do for armor build. 
I wanted surface to be more rough and dirty than on a plane. Next step was to paint small details like these heat reducers. Due to their difficult form, I prefer to paint them by brush, applying thin layers of paint and drying them by blowing air from airbrush. After paint job was done, I glued wings to places and was ready for decals. They are quite nice in this kit, but also very thin, so I recommend to be extra careful with them. This time I've used oils instead of enamel wash and to ensure smooth work on satin surface I applied a layer of white spirit and only then applied oils. Good side of oils that they give me much more control. I'm blending them just after they start to dry a bit. I use brush slightly moisture to his white spirit to do so. And after wash was done, I wanted to increase this dirty grimy effect and used ammo shaders. They are very good for this purpose and they also can be easily cleaned with water if overdone.
Then I covered all my work with matte varnish. For smoke effect, I used highly diluted flat black from Tamiya. Simple but effective. And the only thing left was to put rotors in place. And that's all! Doesn't it look gorgeous? I know, a lot of stuff wasn't filmed and I'm sorry for that. Some I forgot to film, some I wasn't able due lack of talent or technical problems. And in general, it's hard to add everything to the video without making it too long and boring. For that I opened my own Patreon page, where I will add more pictures of every next build with more explanation what and why I did. I will add link to the description and I will be super happy if you will check it out. As usual, thank you for watching, for your likes and comments and for you being so awesome. See you next time!